looked at a person and had a lustful thought. Every time, guys, you've undressed a woman with your eyes, and if you could, and the things you, you've done in your mind that you know you wouldn't have been able to get away with in reality, God judges you as though you've actually done it, because God knows your heart. And God says about the human heart that it's the most deceitful thing that there is. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and it's desperately wicked. And God's the only one who can know it. So because of these things, because of how holy and good God is that He's given us life, and He's absolutely perfect and absolutely holy. And He deserves absolute obedience. He deserves absolute adoration and worship. But none of us give it to Him. We say, no thanks God, I got it. Just like our first father Adam did in the Garden of Eden. God told Adam what was forbidden. But Adam wanted to eat from that tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said, no thanks God, I'll decide for myself what's good and what's evil. I'll make up my own mind as to what's right and what's wrong. And folks, that's the condition that we're all in right now. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us have turned to our own ways. We don't, we don't look to the Word of God and say, we don't look to our Creator and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? We turn to our own ways. We decide what's right in our own eyes, and we do those things. And, we are, and we're sinful, evil creatures. And the things that we think are good are not. All of our righteous acts are nothing but filthy rags in the eyes of God. Our very best is disgusting. It's a stench in God's nostrils. That's our very best. And our situation was so desperate that had God not intervened, every human being since Adam, every man born since Adam, would spend eternity in hell, and rightly so. But God did intervene. God entered into His own creation. He put on human flesh so that He could taste death for all men. Jesus didn't have to die. He lived a life of perfect obedience to the Father. The soul that sins shall die, but Jesus never sinned, so He didn't have to die. He said, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down willingly. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to raise it up again. And that's exactly what he did. He willingly went to the cross. The night before he was crucified, he prayed to the Father. He said, Father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. He humbled himself. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He submitted to the will of the Father. He went and he tasted death to ransom guilty sinners from what they deserve. The wrath of God, which I deserve, was placed upon His sinless Son. Folks, that just rolls off people's backs like water off a duck. But folks, understand it. People say to me, people ask me all the time, do you really think God would torture his own children in hell? And I, and I just have to say to him, look what he did to his sinless son. That's his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who was perfect, who was sinless, who was holy. And the Father tortured him. He crushed him. He allowed him to be murdered by so sinful men. That's how much God loves justice and how much He hates sin. Yes, if God would do that to His sinless, perfect Son, just imagine what He would do to guilty sinners who die in their sins, who rightly deserve that judgment. Don't think for a moment that God is too kind to punish sinners. Look at the cross. Look at what He did to His Son in order to save sinners. The 
The reason that happened to his son was because of sin. God the Father made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. Look at the beaten and bloody body of the Son of God on that cross. That's God's reaction to sin. God took the sins of sinful men and placed them on His sinless Son. And then He poured out His wrath for that sin onto His sinless Son. And that's why Jesus suffered so much on that cross. His suffering was so intense, a new word was invented called excruciating. And that word excruciating literally means out of the cross. And then Jesus, after He bore the sins of His people, rose from the dead, proving that God the Father accepted that payment. He, God the Father received that sacrifice, and the sins of His people were atoned for. And then Jesus ascended into heaven, and the Father and the Son have sent the Holy Spirit into the world to gather His redeemed. And the way that they're gathered is through the preaching of this message, through the pre preaching of the cross, that Jesus Christ has abolished death, and He's brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And so even though we all deserve God's wrath and we all deserve God's judgment, there's mercy and there's forgiveness available in Jesus Christ. He is, he is the Savior. He's the one Savior of the world. He's the only Savior you can come to. He's the only one who can save you. There's no other option. Well, there is one other option. The other option is not to be saved and to pay for your own sins in hell. That's one option. You can pay for your own sins by spending eternity in hell. The only other option is somebody else pays for your sins. And it can't be me. I can't do it because I have sins of my own. And there's not another man on the planet that can pay for your sins because they all have sins of their own too. Jesus Christ is unique in that since He was sinless, He alone is able to bear the sins of others. And that's what He did. That's why He came into the world, to bear the sins of others. Proved it by His resurrection. And all those who repent and come to Him in faith will receive forgiveness. He who believes on the Son has everlasting life. But he that does not believe in the Son of God shall not see life. The wrath of God remains on him. We all start out there. We all start out under the wrath of God. Right from birth, we're all born in sin. The Bible says we're all by nature children of wrath. We're born in a sinful condition because of what we've inherited from our first father, Adam. So we either remain under the wrath of God, remain in our sin, or Jesus Christ delivers us from it. The Bible said to you know, Mary and Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. We're all born in sin. We're all born under the wrath of God. But we don't all have to stay there. We can be rescued out from under the wrath of God by the grace of God that's offered in Jesus Christ. If you'll turn to Him, if you'll repent of your sins and trust in the person and work of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. The person, who He is, God in the flesh, the creator of heaven and earth, God incarnate. And you must believe that. Because there's only one Jesus that can save you, and that's the Jesus of the Bible. God in the flesh, God the Son, the second person of the Trinity. There's a lot of people who say that they believe in Jesus, but they deny His deity. They deny that He's God in the flesh. Like the Mormons, like Jehovah Witnesses, even Muslims. They'll say Jesus was a great prophet, but He's not the Son of God. He's not God in the flesh. But Jesus said, unless you believe that I am, you'll die in your sins. 
So you must be trusting in the person of Jesus Christ, who He is, God in the flesh. And you must also trust in His work, the work that He did to redeem sinful men, that He lived a sinless life, that He offered that life as a substitute for guilty sinners, that He died on the cross, satisfying the wrath of God against sin, and then rising from the dead to demonstrate His power over death and the grave, and to give us evidence that our sins are forgiven. So anyone who will turn, repent from their sins, trust in the person and work of Jesus Christ, will no longer be under the wrath of God. But they'll have everlasting life, and they'll know it because the Holy Spirit will now indwell them and give them an inner witness, an inner light. They'll know that they've passed from death to life, and they'll know that they're children of God. So folks, thanks for listening. I'm going to hop down now. <laughs> no, hey.